Captioning sponsored by Superior Toyota Hyundai and WVU Medicine Camden Clark. An ambulance and a car got into a wreck right outside the My Way Lounge. Police say no one was hurt. Regional leaders selected Regional leaders are selected who will represent them on the board that decide how to spend most of the state's opioid settlement funds. Meteorologist Kerr Greenfield has your forecast and Ryan Wilson joins us in sports. WTAP News at 11 starts now. Live from our studios at One Television Plaza, this is WTAP News at 11. An ambulance and another car got into a wreck in Parkersburg tonight. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Phyllis Smith. An ambulance and a car got into a wreck right outside of the My Way Lounge. According to officials, no one was taken to the hospital. The ambulance is a St. Joseph's ambulance. Officials were called to the scene around 8.30 tonight. Officials are not yet clear on what caused the crash. It is currently under investigation. Parkersburg police and fire responded to the scene. Turning to the weather now, meteorologist Kirk Greenfield joins us now with the first look at your forecast. Kirk? Well, it may have been the hottest day of the week, but it looks like it's going to prime the pump for tomorrow's strong storms. Jan Dills Marietta Skycam has stopped the Lafayette Hotel, says 70 degrees, 84% relative humidity. The winds out of the south barely three miles per hour and the pressure 29.88 inches continues to fall. When we take a look at the evening planner, we expect to be about 72 by midnight with some increasing clouds as we go. But there's the potential for rain tomorrow morning. Hopefully that will blunt some of the severe weather that may blossom in the afternoon. And we'll talk more about this in detail when I return back to you. Thank you, Kirk. Parkersburg Mayor Tom Joyce is the unofficial opioid Region 3 board member of the West Virginia First Foundation. Local officials from Wood, Tyler, Pleasant, Ritchie, Wirt, Roan, and Jackson counties unofficially elected Joyce this afternoon. The state has seven days to certify the result of today's election to confirm Joyce's position. As the Region 3 representative, Joyce would serve on the state board that will control almost three-fourths of the opioid settlement funds the state is is getting. Joyce says he thinks the most important job for the foundation will be putting resources into addiction prevention. The key to this is raising a generation of young people that doesn't have to face this. Uh, you know, it's going to make for a better workforce, a better, safer communities, cleaner communities, more vibrant communities, and, and I think that uh, it's a tremendous opportunity, and I'm excited about it and honored to have the opportunity to serve. Calhoun County is also a part of Opioid Region 3, but no officials from the county or from Grantsville went to the meeting to participate in today's election. Joyce was nominated by Vienna Mayor Randy Rapp and ran against two other nominees. Early voting starts in Ohio this week for the August 8th special election. Ohio voters will be deciding whether to adopt an amendment to the state constitution that will make it harder for citizen-led amendments to get on the ballot and become law in the future. Ohioans can go to their board of elections from 8 in the morning to 5 in the evening on any weekday from now until July 28th. Early voting hours will be extended further from July 31st through August 6th. Board of Elections Deputy Director Karen Pulowski says that there will be some changes to polling places for the August 8th election due to some of the usual facilities lacking good air conditioning. That makes it uh, obviously more pleasant for the voters and for the poll workers, but also our machines are highly sensitive to um, uh, humidity. Marietta voters who would have gone to the fairgrounds to vote will be at the First Church of the Nazarene. Voters who would have gone to the Washington County Technical Center will be at the Pinehurst Christian Church. Voters who would have gone to Warren High School will be at the Lighthouse Baptist Church. People who would have voted at Lower Salem Elementary School will instead be at Lower Paw Paw Church of Christ. You can find more voting information for the August 8th special election at WTAP. Dot com.
New tonight, Arts Bridges Summer Music Series is in the middle of its 2023 run and it's going strong. According to Executive Director Lindsay Dennis, they've had good attendance, rain or shine so far. From June through a majority of August, music acts perform at Parkersburg City Park from 7 p.m. to 8 every Thursday. Arts Bridge Executive Director Lindsay Dennis says they feature a variety of music with a mix of local and non-local bands. It's a summer tradition that's carried on for 21 years. The overall feel of the event is so positive and relaxed and enjoyable. I think it's just something that um, people know that they can look forward to it every year. Tomorrow night's performance features Henry Lane, a three-piece acoustic group that plays a variety of music. The last summer music series performance will be on August 24th. Per tradition, local school bands will be featured. Dennis says it's a way to give back to our schools and showcase their talent. A church in Parkersburg is giving children free meals this summer. The gathering is offering free lunches for kids to have throughout the summer. Church officials say they are providing these lunches at the Myrtle Street location in Parkersburg from 11 a.m. to noon each weekday. Children's Administrative Director Emily Allen says the church knows it takes a village to take care of a child. This opportunity gives children not only a meal, but a safe place for them to get out of the house. Like we have kids stopping by at 7, 8 o'clock at night sometimes and our pastor will whip them up scrambled eggs or do whatever she can to help or, you know, whoever's around because we're all in and out a lot. But yes, we have a lot of, a lot of kids come and a lot of adults too. And um, just all, I could tell countless stories of, you know, people calling saying they needed food and, you know, we meet them and get them a bag of food or, or whatever they needed. The gathering also has a food pantry at its location on 14th Street. It is available every last Tuesday of the month from 4 to 5 p.m. The church holds Saturday community dinners at the 14th and Latrobe Street location. It is available to all people and is open on Saturdays from 4 to 5 in the evening. It's important to know how to spend for back to school shopping with just about a month until schools open again. Experts with Consumer Credit Counseling Services of the Mid-Ohio Valley say it is important to budget for any back-to-school shopping every, when it comes to everything from school supplies to clothes and school lunches. The group's executive director, Shailene Shrewsbury, says having a plan is thought out is the best way to not overspend. You know, when you go out uh, without a plan, without something written down, it's going to be very easy for you to overspend. If you have that plan, um, something to guide you into your uh, spending, you know, into your this is what we need, this is what we want. If we have enough left after our needs are purchased, here's what we can buy. Um, but if you don't have a plan, that's when it's going to be very easy to go overboard and to spend more than you planned on spending. She says it's important to look at what items are priorities, which ones are wants and needs, and getting the kids involved with the shopping. Shrewsbury says if you have any questions about budgeting, you can call 304-485-3141 or go to their website. The Northwest Territory Ordinance will celebrate its 236th anniversary tomorrow. The celebration will focus on the history of the Founding Fathers and how they set out to develop the Northwest Territory under its new democracy. Marietta is at the forefront of this celebration since it was the first settlement made in the ordinance. The celebration will include a bell ringing and patriotic music from 10 to 10.30 a.m. This will be followed by several guest speakers in Muskingum Park, including Mayor Josh Schlicker, Ohio Representative Dontavius Geralds, and others. The history that you will learn, little details, I think that's what it's all about. And the fellowship of the, the other folks that are here, shared stories, um, you'll enjoy it. The Celebration Committee for the Northwest Territories Anniversary welcomes everyone to come and share an important moment of history and learn something they may not know. The rail 
cars in Harmer Village are being rearranged for the upcoming Harmer Days Festival. The rail cars are in the park near the historic Harmer Bridge. The red box car will be moved to serve as the backdrop for the festival event stage. Several of the rail cars will be moved down the tracks to improve accessibility. Bridge Company Board Chair Larry Sloder explained some of the long-term goals for the rail cars. Long term, we'd love to start renovating those. We'd love to be able to turn them into storefronts or shops. Um, the passenger cars, we have tons of ideas on, on how they can be used. But, you know, we also know that we need to have some space off of the end of the bridge for how the termini are going to come off. So that red box car was going to have to get moved regardless. So now is the right time for it. Sidewalk replacement will be done to make a safe walking area and to improve access to the multi-use event area. A new vehicle entrance will also be installed. The Harmer Days Festival will be from July 28th to July 30th. Still ahead, a new report shows the number of law enforcement officers killed in the line of duty is down compared to this time last year. That story is next at 11. It was another warm and sunny day.